As you can see, this is Gigabyte Z590 UD motherboard. And this machine does have some issues with the current operating system. So I'm going to reinstall Windows 11 on it. So today in this video, I'm going to show you how to get into BIOS, change the current settings for Windows 10 or 11. The procedure would be the same. So first of all, we need to get into BIOS. OK, and then we need to change some basic settings so that system would be ready to take new windows in there. So first of all, you need to create one bootable uh, 10 or 11 thumb drive. If you don't know how to create one, you can check the tutorial video link could be in the description. OK, so once you created the bootable Windows 11 thumb drive, just connect it to your PC. So first of all, we need to get into BIOS. So what you should do, let's connect our USB. So that is the one bootable Windows 11 thumb drive. I connected it already into the USB. And I always prefer at the back, OK, to connect it rather than front. Because the back USB comes direct from motherboard and from comes from the actual ATX case, OK? So once it connected, we are good to go. Make sure your keyboard and mouse also connected. And now we're going to shut it down by pushing down the power button. And once it's switched off, we're going to turn back on. And at the same time, we're going to get ready to keep pressing delete button. So press the power button, come back to delete option. And we're going to keep pressing. All right. So here is the BIOS page. Now, Gigabyte has two different interfaces for the BIOS. One of them called easy mode, as you can see on the top highlighted. And if you press F2, it's going to take you to advanced mode. OK, there are two modes. So from if you press F2, then it's going to take you to easy mode again. From easy mode, you can see like the illustration, how the fan does work, you know, and the boot sequence, how many drives are available, information of the BIOS, everything at a glance. OK. But to change the BIOS settings, boot settings, we need to get into advanced mode by pressing F2 or by clicking in here. Now, I love this motherboard. Why? Because their BIOS system is so brilliant. OK, you don't need to go here and there to set up, you know, kind of secure boot, boot type, boot mode, you know, all those things in different, different options. As you can see, there are a lot of sub menus. OK. So the traditional BIOS, always you need to find the settings from all different options. Rather, in this one, you can go to boot option and change everything. For example, we can change the boot priority option. OK, now if you hit enter, it's going to show you how many boots are available. Now, if you don't see for if you don't see your USB connected here or on that list means your boot settings is not correct or either it did not connect your bootable USB into the right port, or you got something wrong with your bootable USB stick, OK? So we can see there a couple of them. One of them is the current boot manager. And second one is my uh, UEFI, OK? So I just want UEFI as a first boot. So I'm going to highlight it and hit Enter. As you can see here, now it shows the boot option number one is my USB stick. And boot option number two automatically, it shows the current boot, current Windows system. OK, this is the one way. By the way, this is not the mandatory settings that we need to change. Why? Because while restart it, after saving all the correct settings, we can get into temporary boot option by pressing F2. So this is not too important. But in case if you don't have that option for temporary boot menu, then you can select it from here. It's much better. OK, the second one we need to get into first boot. First boot, we're going to leave the disable link like that. OK, um, I prefer in that way. OK, now we're going to go down by pressing the down arrow and we're going to find secure boot. OK, hit enter here. Once you hit enter, you can see the secure boot options. If this is enable or disable, we need to keep it enable. 
So if this is disabled, hit enter again and choose correct one and press enter again to save it. Now, secure boot mode is standard. There are two ways you can do, but I always like standard, so I'm gonna select that one as well. Okay, so pretty much that's all from the secure boot. Now we're gonna press ESC to go down and check if there is any other settings. Now, this is very important, we need to check. When you select the boot type in UEFI, and when the secure boot mode is on, you have to keep the CSM support disabled, okay? Make sure this is disabled, okay? And as you can see here, Windows 10 features. So let's say if you wanna install Windows 11 into that system, what you have to do in this settings, hit enter and choose other OS. Not Windows 10, otherwise for Windows 11. Now, this is pretty much all to get correct boot from the boot settings option. Now we're gonna save and exit it. As you selected our USB bootable Windows 11 thumb drive as a first boot, once you save that one and exit it, it's gonna restart and load up from the bootable Windows 11 thumb drive. So I'm gonna hit enter, yes. And now it's gonna load up. <clears throat> All right, so now we're going to select the language. All right, so we're going to hit next. Next as well, Windows 11. Uh, so next. That's fine. We're going to do Windows 11 Pro. Next, accept it. In this section, as you can see, there are two drives, and I do have some existing data in there, but I'm going to delete the partition. If I delete it, I'm going to lose everything. So if you do have any important data, make sure you back it up before you format, delete, or doing anything, any mess in there, okay? And what are you going to do now? Because if we want to do the clean installation, I just want to delete every single partition just to clear the internal SSD so I could enjoy the fresh windows in there. So we need to select like that one by one. And once we've done everything, it's going to show unallocated spaces. And because of the other two drives, I can choose any one of them. And once I choose in the drive, then I can just hit next button and the actual process would begin. I would suggest you to have the internet connection. Why do you do that? So what would happen is gonna not only install the Windows, plus it's gonna update the Windows to the current status, okay? So let's do that. We are ready to install it. And during the installation, that might take a few uh, kind of, let's say a couple of restarts, which is absolutely fine. Leave it like that. It might take um, 45 minutes to an hour because while it installs, at the same time also it updates it. So that might take some time, okay? So let's carry on and I'll keep going on. I'm gonna fast forward this video to make the video shorter. This is long enough anyway. And I believe from here, anyone would know what to do. At this final stage, it shows checking for Windows updates. So it does have three sections, as you can see the step one, two, three, and four. So if you do that procedure in your laptop, then I would suggest you please leave your charger connected. If desktop, obviously there is main power, should be connected and everything should be fine. 